protection of an Exchange 2007 CCR cluster. CCR clusters, or continuous cluster replication, provides a perfectly valid way to protect an Exchange uh, server locally. However, it doesn't really give you a uh, valid option to get the data out of the building and to easily fail over your exchange organization and very easily fail it back. So this is where double take availability comes into the equation. It's very, very easy to protect an existing cluster or a standalone exchange server to a remote site and very, very easy to fail over and fail back with very little impact on users or very little downtime. To start with, I have five virtual machine desktops on my large display. I have a two node CCR cluster running Exchange 2007. The active node is CN11 and the passive node is CN10. I can use the Exchange Management Console to view the Exchange cluster. And I can see I'm only clustering the mailbox role. It's the only role you can install on a cluster. I have a second exchange server called EX1, which has got the hub transport role, client access role, and the mailbox role. This is actually showing you now EX1. You can see the exchange services there are listed and are currently running. EX1 is in a different subnet to the cluster. So I'm just going to do an IP config, and you can see it's 10.10.11. And if I ping the exchange cluster, can see it is 10.10.10 .10 so we're talking different subnets we're going to protect the CCR cluster to a remote site. Moving across my desktop you can see I have a Windows 7 client machine which is running Outlook and I'll use this for doing testing throughout the demonstration. I'll just send a quick email as demonstration of the cluster to verify the cluster is actually working. After a few seconds, that email should appear in my inbox. Finally, the last machine I'm using is a double take management console. I'm using this exclusively to run the double take tools in order to configure protection. And we can see I have three servers with double take installed, both nodes in the cluster, CN10 and CN11, and the exchange server EX1. Before configuring protection, I'm going to verify that I can move my cluster resources from one node to the other. I'm just going to do a cluster move on the resource group. So this will move the exchange resources from CN11 to CN10. And the users shouldn't experience any downtime whatsoever with that move. I will just send another test email to verify that exchange is functioning. We can see that the email has arrived and so it exchanged the cluster appears to be working normally. I'm going to use the double take console to protect the exchange cluster. I'm going to use the get started wizard, select double take availability and say I wish to protect an application. This will actually launch double take availability application manager. I'm going to choose my exchange cluster as my source provide credentials to log on to the server, which is the administrator account of the domain, in this case. Select my target server, which is the exchange server, the standalone exchange server called EX1. Step three is to configure protection. Here I can choose the type of failover. Only DNS failover is supported when you're protecting a cluster. I can also choose which services I wish to start and stop during the failover process. I can add additional services if I wish. If I wanted to add maybe a um, antivirus scanner, I could add that service into the list if it was available. I need to configure my DNS failover. The source and target DNS servers have been detected and they will be updated on automatically by double take on failover. I can choose my source and my target IP mappings. Notice the source IP is the same as the cluster IP address. I need to update my TTL because I don't want a, a long um, DNS failover timeout delay 
uh, once we failed over, we want clients to quickly get the new DNS records. I test my DNS configuration and verify that I can communicate with the Active Directory domain controllers that are running DNS. The monitoring tab allows me to enable monitoring or enable automatic failover or manual intervention, usually for uh, protection or to a remote site, manual intervention would be the recommended approach. I can choose my type of monitor, either monitor the, um, the network, but basically pinging the source server or monitor the double take service. I can specify the monitor interval and failure count. This will determine the number of seconds before a failover condition is identified and reported, or if automatic failover is configured, the dim number of seconds before an automatic failover occurs. The connection tab allows me to choose options about the connection. I can route to a particular IP address, or I can select storage groups I wish to protect, or I can add additional folders, files and folders to the replication set if I wish to. I can choose the mirror type, a full or checksum are the only supported types for exchange. I can enable compression, and there are three levels of compression natively with double take. Compression is always a trade-off with CPU versus bandwidth. The advanced tab allows me to make changes to the default configuration. I can modify failover scripts, fail back scripts and restore scripts if I wish to. For this demonstration I'm not going to make any changes here. I'm just going to accept the defaults. I can also invoke uh, Active Directory replication to force Active Directory replication on failover. I'm going to change the default time for, to, down to three minutes for this demonstration. My configuration is complete. I need to validate the configuration. Double take is going to take a look at the source exchange server and at the target exchange server, verify that they are compatible and suggest any changes that need to be made in order to make them compatible. For Exchange, there will always be some changes that need to be made. Luckily, DoubleTake provides a Fix All button, which fixes 90% of configuration issues. Once the Fixed All button has been used, the configuration will be validated again and any further configuration issues will be reported. Here the warning about the SMTP queue can be safely ignored. The final step is to enable protection. DoubleTake is going to create the replication set containing the exchange databases, log files, and it's going to create a connection between the source and the target server. Finally, DoubleTake will create a service on the target exchange server which will monitor the source exchange server for uptime and report if there is a failure or invoke an automatic failover if that has been configured. Once the data has been synchronized between the source and target servers, the mirror will become idle, will continue to replicate and the exchange server is protected. We can now see that we are protected. Protection status is protected. We could fail over gracefully at any time. But first of all, I'm going to just have a look at the cluster. I can see a DT connection, which is a double take cluster resource that's been created. If I move the, ex the exchange resource group again, we'll see that the resource will come online again from the new active node. I'm now ready to test a failure. So before I do this, I'm going to send a an email. And as soon as this email arrives in my inbox, I'm going to power off both nodes in the cluster. This will cause a cluster failure. The user will be disconnected from Exchange and we'll have to fail over using double take. Both cluster nodes have now been turned off and the cluster has failed. I'm going to launch Double Take Application Manager on my Double Take Management server. I'm going to choose my target server, which is EX1, and I get prompted that a fail of condition has been met. Would I like to fail over? So click yes. 
This will invoke the fail of a process. The fail of a process is going to ask us if we want to initiate a graceful or an immediate failover. I'm going to choose an immediate failover in this case. There's nothing in my queue. I have failed my cluster. The fail of a process is going to run a script which will start the exchange services on the target servers and will update Active Directory to change the user attributes to point their mailbox location at the target server. Status is now failed over. Returning to my Outlook client, I'm just going to send a test email to verify that everything's working. There you go, the email has arrived. Failover was successful. Now the beauty about double take for protecting exchange, in fact protecting anything with ex with double take 5.3 is that we can fail back very simply. I'm going to start up the exchange cluster nodes and I'm going to go into cluster manager and you can see that most of the resources in the cluster have failed because the network name has been taken and is assigned to another machine. I'm going to click the fail back button this will bring up the uh, fail back options. I can choose if I wish to restore the data or I can choose not to restore the data. For instance, if I'd done a test failover, I can choose a level of compression to use and I can choose whether to use a full or a checksum mirror. The main benefit, a huge benefit or rather of double take is that we do not need to replicate the entire exchange database back. Just the changes that have been made while we were in DR. The other huge benefit is that the Exchange users stay online connected to the DR ser server during the restoration process. So failing back is a two-stage process. First of all, we restore the data, just the changes that are needed, and then we redirect the users back to the original server. Now we don't need to complete the fail back process until we're ready, so we can restore the data Keep the data in sync while users are still connected to the DR server and only when we're ready, maybe at the weekend, we can finalize the failback process and relocate the users back to the original production server. In this case, I did fail back immediately and shortly we'll see the cluster resources come online. In fact, there you go, you can see the cluster resources starting. In fact, the the Exchange cluster resources are now online and all we need to do now is wait for Outlook to realize that the user's mailbox is back online and is back on the original server and we, the, the failback has been completed. In fact, there you go, Outlook is prompting the user to restart Outlook and we've done that and the process is completed. Final thing to do is to re-establish protection. So click the enable protection button, which will take you through the validation process and your server will be protected again. One last thing to look at is target state verification. This is a mechanism that allows you to mount the target replica database, verify consistency and undo that process without impacting on your protection status. Use the tools menu to select verify target data. This will take a snapshot of the replica databases and mount that snapshot. When you've complete, click continue. The snapshot will be reverted and the server will continue to be protected. The key test we're looking for here is the ability to mount the database, to mount the replica database.